make a slight adjustment here. Hello folks. Hey Mike again. As you can see I'm playing a classical guitar today. I actually studied classical guitar for, for a while. Uh, I got a grade 8. Which seems to be um, quite divisive when I tell people that. Some people go, oh smart ass. But it's, it's, if you do something in your life you can't undo it to, to satisfy someone else. It's just just the way it is. Um, the story behind that is that I went for a, an interview uh, for a teaching job with a music service which is kind of a, basically an agency um, and at the interview there was another guitar teacher that I knew um, and a guitar teacher that I didn't know who was actually uh, quite a bit of a, a famous um, famous performer um, I, I, I kind of gave up you know, I went for the interview and did, 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 did the performance in the interview did a, did a teaching uh, demonstration and then I went away thinking I, I won't get the job because that you know there's a there's a famous performer there who's, who's obviously who wouldn't want them on their books you know but he didn't get the job and the the, the other teacher that I knew quite well did get the job um, and when I spoke to the the boss I, you know to get feedback on why he didn't get the job he said that I hadn't done it a uh, um, a grade 8 in guitar so I went away and I bought myself a, a Trinity um, grade 8 book of pieces learnt a few pieces from it learnt the scales and went and did the exam really really badly <laughs> why I didn't get some some help get some uh, you know a teacher to to help me with that I don't, I don't know but um, I, I went and did the grade eight exam. I, I, I couldn't play the pieces as well as, as as they should be played. And I came home from the exam thinking, I really need to do that again because I'm obviously going to fail. And uh, so I spent the next. This they said you won't you won't get a result for four weeks or so. So I spent the next month putting in the time that I should have done before the exam, learning the pieces, learning the scales properly, um, working on the sight reading, and it got to the point where I thought, I, I can play these pieces really well. Um, just one thing I should say, prior to that, while I was in, uh, I, I went to university to study music and English, uh, and they sent me for guitar lessons. I said, I don't need guitar lessons. <laughs> uh, I've been playing for 20 years. And uh, so they, they sent me to this guitar teacher who said, um, do you fancy learning to play some flamenco? Which was which was actually a lie because he, he basically taught me uh, some classical guitar, which I'm, something I'm really, really pleased about now with, with in, you know, in retrospect. I'd been from from right from the very start. I had the Francis Notebook, uh, solo guitar playing, volume one, which I've still got somewhere. It's actually it's just in bits. It's just a pile of paper with some gnarled up uh, cardboard surrounding the paper. It's just disintegrated. I used it that much, and there was a piece in the back of that book which I used to look at with amazement and awe, thinking. One of these days I'll be able to play that. Well, well, you come to the point where you can play it and I thought, well, I've cracked it. Which I hadn't, by any stretch. But what it did give me was knowledge about the um, the way that you used the, the right hand um, technique. P-I-M-A, P for pull guard or thumb, indices, index, mini for the middle finger, uh, annular. And you, you play in this kind of... Um, uh, there's, there's two there's two there's two things you you need to to be able to do you need to be able to play a rest stroke which is this so it's the other finger stays straight and lands on the next string gives a nice clear loud bell like tone 
And then there's the free stroke, which is this, which has got a lot less, a lot less projection. And and the reason for this, these two different techniques, is because the I think it was Beethoven who wrote that the, that the guitar was a mini orchestra. So so what you're doing is is you're playing the melody, the accompaniment, and the you know there's 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 there's, there's three strands of melody basically the the treble. Um, the alto and the bass, or I should do that the other way around, the bass at the bottom, obviously. So, in a, in a piece such as... Um, it'd be better if I put it into standard tuning. This piece, uh, another Francis Tariga piece called, called the, the Grand Waltz. Uh, I'll just play a little bit of it. I, I don't know whether you noticed, but the the harmony was was a little bit of a at a lower dynamic level than, than the melody. So so this um, was was really clear with it within the within the whole the melody. You could hear it within within. within That's because I, I use the uh, the rest stroke for the melody, so that those notes are always nice and clear. Pro project more than the rest of the the the, the 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 piece, which is the accompaniment. Um, and I also learnt about the, the the first position and the second position, the third position. So, so basically, you, you, what, you, what happens is wherever you are on the guitar, the rule is that you use, if, if you were playing up in this area of the neck, you would use the first finger for the fifth fret, middle finger for the sixth, third finger for the uh, seventh, and the little finger for the eighth. And that, that's, that's how you'd move about there. To such an extent that you could play anywhere on the neck without doing this kind of it's always a. Uh, it's kind of treated as uniform. That the, the the technique of of moving around the neck in that kind of. Um. So anyway, I'm rambling. So I use the node, the node book solo guitar playing, which is probably the best thing you could you could buy as a, as a as a beginner. I would have thought. Well, it certainly was for me. Although having said that, you know, if if you if you're only going to consider playing electric electric rock, you probably would be better going with rock school. Which some of the some of the material in in rock school is is fabulous. I digress. So I went to this teacher and he pushed me so much, and he was really. Uh, critical and he made me feel mm, made me feel negative about guitar playing and then after about 10 weeks of this like uh, difficult process of learning to play the guitar but I'd go in each week and he'd say let's let's hear your piece and I'd play it and he'd go no there's in your pin you're pinching that that's you're playing that like it's a quaver it's a crotchet and then, oh, and then one, one week I went in, played a piece, and he said, that's really good. And I was like, oh, <laughs> thank God for that. I think it was this um, Bach, one of his ch cello, um, uh, from, from one of his cello suites. So uh, that whole process of, of making me um, work, work, work in a, in, a, in a negative way really did have a positive outcome. So that when it came to the time where I thought I need to do grade eight in, in classical guitar, I did it myself, which is ridiculous, really. Um, to such an extent that obviously I, I thought I'd failed the exam, which I didn't. Because when the, when the uh, when the result came through, I think you needed uh, sixty marks out of a hundred to get a pass, and, and I got the bare pass. I got 60, 60, 60 marks, 
which was kind of good. Yeah, you've passed, move on. I'm bad because I wanted the old singing, all dancing, uh, you know, distinction type of thing. But I'd satisfied myself that I could that I could read well enough to learn the pieces and I could perform the pieces well enough once I knew them. Um, so I, I would say classical guitar is probably the best way to learn in, in many respects for, for your technique, for the ability to read. You, you pick up so much theory as well along the way, and. Uh, there's also yeah I would say jazz guitar jazz guitar or classical guitar you're going to learn a lot more than if you if you just concentrate on, on rock or, or and rock and blues there's nothing wrong with rock and blues <laughs> I'm not saying that at all but you will learn a lot more as I say in terms of theory technique uh, you learn the way around the neck. Um, there was another YouTuber who made a video of, of a Skype video, uh, a, a Skype lesson that he, that he had. And the teacher, uh, I, you may have seen what it, the one I'm talking about, the teacher said to him, you need, you need to go back and learn the, uh, learn the way around the neck before we can even... Van Halen was mentioned and she said that uh, the, the Van Halen style of playing wasn't even a, uh, Van Halen wasn't a player, which seems pretty strange to say. I mean, it, it, whenever you mention Eddie Van Halen in the context of guitar playing, you, you, this, it's, a, it's just a lot of superlatives. How many people has he influenced in a positive way and how much, how much of what happened in the, in the 90s in terms of rock was influenced directly by what um, what Eddie Van Halen did with the electric guitar you're talking about bands like Extreme, Winger, Brat and uh, the list probably goes on but this this woman said Van Halen wasn't a player which is ridiculous really because he's he's, he's a pioneer he's, he's, he's influenced so many people but it is probably true to say, if, if you walked into a room full of people with musical instruments and a music stand in front of them with a, with a sheet of, with a score and said, okay, one, two, three, go, would Eddie, would Eddie live with that? He probably, he probably, he might, I don't know, but he probably wouldn't. Uh, I think that that's what she meant by he's, he's not a player. A player being someone who's who's got the ability to walk into a room, look at a piece of paper, and and interpret with his instrument what's what's written on that piece of paper in a successful way. Um. So that she, in a way, she was right, but it just came across as a really the whole exercise was 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 really bad. From from speaking from a teacher's point of view. What she did as a teacher was just just to say to a, a potential pupil, that, you know, ten minutes into a lesson, go away. I'm not teaching you. There's your money back. I thought that was. I think she could have given him some some sort of uh, some sort of useful uh, ideas, and then maybe said at the end of the lesson. You need to go away and find someone who's willing to teach you as a beginner. Um, so anyway, classical guitar. Actually, this 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 is an interesting guitar. If you if you look at this, it's it's been well well and truly used and abused over the years. I got this on eBay, and. Uh, it is, there, was, there were no bids on this guitar and I looked at it a few times and then there was maybe an hour to go and I thought well this is where the bidding starts in the next hour you know, it's, and it's, nobody bid it on it and the, the, the list price was, was £10 well this, the starting price was £10 
and somebody put a bid in for ten pounds. So I thought, well, I, I put a bid in for twenty pounds, and that was it. I won the auction. So, um, I contacted the seller, and he said, "Can you come and pick it up?" He lived in Warrington, which is not too far from 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 where I live, about forty minutes drive. Uh, and when I got there, it was it was a vicar, and. He, he had maybe five or six kids, and, and I said to him, look, this is a, a Ramundo, and he said, I know exactly what this guitar is. I don't know if you can see it in there. Ramundo. These are, these are, these are fairly well-known, uh, good quality classical guitars. This is not a concert, a concert guitar. This is a, uh, uh, it's not a beginner guitar, it's the intermediate, I don't know, it's kind of a, in between him. Basically a concert guitar is uh, really loud, put together really well. It's quite expensive, generally handmade by some Spanish gurus who've had the knowledge handed down after hundreds of years. <laughs> um, with the best tone what's in mind. <laughs> so I, and I said to him, look, I, I can't, I, I'm, I'm sorry about the fact that you've only got £20 from your auction. He said, don't worry, that's the, that was the agreed price, that's, the, that's what I want from you. Um, I offered to give him more money and he said, no, look, there's a, there's a, there was a small crack. And when I say small, it was about that big there. And he said, it, it, taking into account the crack, uh, that's why it's, it's, it's cheap. But it was pretty battered too, and I said, "Why have you Why have you battered this guitar like this?" He said, "I bought it for the kids to use in uh, when we when we do when we sing in church. So it's bought a really high a high quality guitar, classical guitar, for this type of thing." <laughs> hadn't been treated with, with the love and respect it should have had. So, um, and this has been repaired a few times because the crack grew and then I took it to someone else and, and he, as you can see he sanded all this down and he ran some glue into the crack and that was okay for a while and then I, I leave the guitar downstairs for you, for you know, I can pick it up whenever I want to. And then came home one day, went to pick it up and it wasn't there. I had a look around the house and it was upstairs, tucked into a corner and I picked it up and played it and it was, there was a rattle, a really annoying kind of rattle going on. I looked around and there was a huge dent in there. So what I did was, I had to get inside, actually, I had to use a, a small stick and push the wood back out so it was all level. Uh, so ran some glue into the into the crack all the way along, clamped it together. And it seems to have worked quite well. And I've sprayed it with um, a lacquer, fairly thick layers of lacquer. So it's glued. It's got wood glue. Uh, it's been clamped and it's been lacquered. So touch wood that'll keep it together. The, the annoying rattle's gone. It just doesn't look as good as uh, it would do. As you can see, this is quite old. But speaking from, from the perspective of someone who's um, probably fair to say a rock player, I, I, I would recommend I would recommend learning the classical guitar because you, you, you do glean more from 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 that process than you would normally also I mean it, it, I'm arguing with myself here but I, I did for a while I was in a jazz guitar duo two, two acoustic guitars um, and that whole process was probably just as useful in terms of theory um, and the way, and in in, in performance, the, the way that um, 
a guitar can be used in a performance. That was probably more advan advantageous than, than anything I've ever done. I actually used to busk as a, as a jazz guitar duo. And we went to a town called Chester, uh, where you could bus pretty pretty much without any hassle. Uh, the, 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 the council said you could you can if you bus in that corner there, you can stay there for an hour. Then you have to move on. And there was there was always ten or twelve bus, buskers in the middle of the town, but they always stayed in the same place. So you'd you'd get there and you'd find you'd find a good spot and and you'd keep it all day. So. If the weather was good enough, you'd actually make some decent money. But you could play. Um, you know, there were times where you'd, where you'd be playing the guitar in public for maybe six hours or so. Which does put a real uh, strain on, on, on things in terms of your ability to sustain a, a, a performance and how you how do you how do you make um, a performance sound fresh when you've already done it twice in the last three hours so you start to you start to you start to move around the neck in in a way that um, you wouldn't have done before and we found that the the minor swing Django Reinhardt's minor swing recognize it from that and so on um, we found that that piece was absolutely fabulous for for, um, for, for filling the hat with money <laughs> And as, as well as filling the hat with money, you, you, you begin to develop this, this, this knowledge of how to, how to take a, a guitar solo. And it's, so it just, I'll just explain quickly. If you don't know what jazz is, I mean, obviously you know what jazz is, but what it actually means is within... Um, an ensemble, a group of musicians who are performing the piece, the, whichever given piece that may be, they will all play as, a, as an ensemble. They will play a tune or a piece of music. Um, maybe for, I don't know, let's say 32 bars. It could be, it could be an eight bar melody. And then each member of the band will get a similar number of bars to perform a solo. Once that's done, the band will then perform the, the, the initial melody. So it's kind of, um, I've heard a lot of people talk about um, equality within, the, 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 the music was, was uh, designed for, for equality. So that regardless of background, race, etc., it's it's equal. Everyone gets gets their own say. So when you, when there's only two in in the in the ensemble, two acoustic guitars, you 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 pretty much uh, on your own when it comes to what what goes on in the solo. So and the the other guitarist is, is just. <laughs> three chords A minor D minor and, and E7 so um, so a lot of the time you, you, you you're thinking in terms of a harmonic minor which works really well and then I realized over time 
A harmonic minor works really well with the blues scale. So you start doing a lot of that, and then you, and then you start thinking, well, there's there's three triads, or or three 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 chords, three chunks of harmony. You can. So when it goes to D minor, you start exploring all the possibilities of playing over a D minor chord, which obviously you can use the arpeggio. You can use a D minor scale. You can use a mode of another scale, which just means, um, say, a Dorian starting on D, which is the second mode of C major. Uh, obviously, for E7, the dominant chord. Got some options there where, where, where I know how you go about that turn around when it where the music comes back to the tonic chord, the first chord. And if you if you're doing that for quite a few hours in a day, you you pick up some really unusual ideas. And uh, over over time uh, those ideas became incorporated into what I did. Uh, in a, in a rock band, in a, in a covers band, for for a good while.